Hello dear friends, thank you for joining me today. I've got a quick idea to share with you, something that I used a lot um, in our church ministry. We used it for Mother's Day and Father's Day for making gifts for other people and it just requires a few very very basic elements. So you're going to need to have a stone, you'll have to have a soft paintbrush with probably Taclon bristles are the best, Taclon being synthetic and then you're going to need Mod Podge or Gel Medium. So what we did was we used to make gifts for Mother's Day and Father's Day and we had about a thousand people in our congregation so we had probably 600 gifts to make for women and about 500 odd for men. So I used to get verses of scripture, lay them up on A4 paper like this and then print it on mulberry paper. So to be able to do this, you need to just put a little bit of glue in the corners of a piece of A4 paper. Then secure your mulberry paper, which you've cut to size, onto the A4 paper. And then that will go through your printer. The mulberry paper on its own doesn't work that well. And make sure that you're using a laser printer. Alternatively, you can actually just secure it onto paper and go, go to the photocopy shop and ask them to run it through their copier. Some will do it for you, some won't, but um, a photocopier or a laser printer. The inkjet printers, unfortunately, when you're using the Mod Podge, because it's liquid, they will tend to make the ink smudge. So that's our starting point for today. Then you need to have a couple of pebbles. I just pick these up on the beach and then I paint them white. And then I tear out my images. From my mulberry paper and I like the softness of that torn edge. So I've got a whole lot of different stones and I've got things to stick onto them. So let me show you how it's done. So as I say you need some Mod Podge. I shook my bottle up so I have a little bit of Mod Podge in the lid and I love this crocky brush. <laughs> I had a shop back in South Africa and my grandson and I were busy unpacking brushes one day out of a packet and out came this wonky brush and we kind of just thought it was rather fun. So we're working with a wonky brush today. So this one's for you my darling. Right, so the first thing to do is to understand that your mulberry paper is very thin and pretty transparent. So you're going to be painting onto a stone and the stone needs to be a light colour otherwise if you had a dark colour stone you're going to have the colour of the stone showing through. I've put a layer of Mod Podge down on the stone so that it secures the image when I stick it down and now I'm just gently going to brush over the surface. This will do two things. It will secure the pictures onto the stone and it will make sure that they blend nicely into the surface and give it a water resistant feel. So it's actually encapsulating the ink there. And as you start to find the paper softening, all the little wrinkles go away. So do try and brush them down as well. Every stone is different so you can't have a template for this. And then just set them aside and leave them to dry. So I'm just going to do a few more for you so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use this flatter surface of this rock. And sometimes these funny shapes actually you think I can't do anything with them but they work out quite nicely. So I'm doing that. I'm just using a little bit of Mod Podge on my brush to pick up my image so that my fingers don't get too sticky and then I'm just taking a little bit more on my brush and brushing it over. These particular pages have either silver gold threads in them so I'm trying to wrap those encapsulating them into the Mod Podge as well. Okay just work through make sure you haven't got any little air bubbles because that will leave a weakness in your paper once it dries it might get bumped and torn Make sure you rub those all down nicely. You've covered all the surface. Capture those little threads and then set it aside. If you are doing things for mass production, this is great. If you are a school teacher, it's wonderful because you can get a whole lot of stones for next to nothing and you'd be able to make gifts with your own wording on for children, for their parents. Or even you could do them with um, wording for things like a garden. You could do labels for a vegetable garden. Right, same procedure, put a little bit of the podge onto the stone and then just gently smooth it down and you can see it really takes no time at all. So the real preparation is painting the stones and this could be done in a two-part activity. Paint the stones one day, stick the pictures down another way, another day. If you were going to put these out into the garden, 
I do suggest that you actually put some kind of varnish over the um, papers otherwise you're going to find that the weather will cause them just to lift so something like an exterior varnish that is clear would be suitable okay so with all of these make sure that you get all the little fluffy edges down really nice and secure press out all the little wrinkles and as the paper softens you'll just see that this becomes really easy even with the most peculiar shaped little rocks that I've worked with over time um, I've never had problems it just works itself smooth make sure for you're watching for those dry areas so that you can go over them and look how nice that is because you actually can't really even see where the paper ends and the stone begins right so again I'm applying some onto the surface here picking it up with my damp brush and then just applying more Mod Podge over the top and as I said at the right at the beginning if you don't have Mod Podge you could use gel medium um, your craft glues and your PVA glues I tend to find are slightly opaque you could try them with a white surface it might be okay but if you're working with something that has color it might be a bit problematic because you might lose some of the color I did a lot of experiments when I was teaching decoupage because people said to me, oh, why can't we just use, you know, craft glue or acrylic glue? And so I tested it, but the more layers you put on, the more opaque the pictures became. So this one's an interesting one. The images are a little bit larger than the actual stone. So I'm just going to simply wrap it around to the other side a little bit. And that doesn't matter. Let people turn over and read what's on the other side. You do want to make sure that if you're working that you're keeping your hands fairly clean so keep a little wet wipe near to you just so that you can do that and don't let your fingers become dry because the minute you put that onto the paper it has a tendency to tear you'll start to lift it up right so I've completed these ones in no time at all and I hope that's given you an idea of something that you could actually do for a fundraiser of some sort. Let me just pop them all here in the middle so you can see. So I'm going to leave these to dry and then I'll take some pics and put them at the end of the video for you to have a look at. Thanks for joining me today. Bye for now.